Now, there's a heck of a lot of Lightroom alternatives out there, but there hasn't been one that I've been excited about until this one that I recently found. Now, it's called Photomator, and it was acquired by Apple this year in February of 2025. Um, now, since then, there hasn't been a lot of updates, but I want to break down exactly all the really nice things about it, including why you might want to switch to it over Lightroom and then talk about whether or not it's going to actually kill Lightroom or not. We'll be comparing and contrasting some of the best features. So if you are someone who's wanting to get off of Adobe's subscription, model, I'm going to talk you through it, tell you all about this software in today's video. Now let's jump right in there. So the first thing that you'll notice here, I'm um, just been editing this photo. The layout is very similar. Now, one of the things that you'll find with a lot of Lightroom alternatives is that, you know, they're a lot of times a lot more difficult to use and Lightroom is very, is quite easy to use with everything on the right side. Now, Photomator is probably the first Lightroom alternative that I think is nearly just as powerful as Lightroom and offers an even easier to use user interface. So once you've selected the photo that you want to edit here, you just have a bunch of options on the right side to go down. Very similar. You know, there's a few different things. There's no whites or blacks, but we have a black point, which is essentially the same as blacks. And then there's other things like brightness. Um, there's no dehaze, but we have texture and clarity. You know, a lot of different options that you can do here. And there's even a few extras. And we'll talk about some of these shortly. So that makes this software really attractive. Now there's also masking tools. You can come up here, create uh, any kind of mask you want, color range, gradients, brushes, um, subject, sky, background selection whatever you want to do. And then all your layers are thrown in up here. So you have a ton of different options um, and they are very powerful compared to Lightroom. Now you also have some spot healing adjustments up here, crop tool, the auto editor. Um, you can even do some presets down here. The really nice thing about this software is that you can actually hide adjustments that you don't want. So compared to Lightroom where you're kind of stuck with what you have, you know, of course you can close the adjustments down um, so they're not displayed, you know, so this is displayed. You can close it down so it's not displayed. You can do the same thing in Lightroom. You can actually hide these adjustments too. So for example, I can go in here, click on these three dots and I can click customize adjustments and say, you know, something like LUT, I'm never gonna use, I can just click that and turn it off so that it doesn't appear in um, all of my options here. So it just kind of helps to declutter the workspace. I really do like that. So the masking options work great. You can go in here, click on this plus, uh, select subject, select sky, select background, whatever. You can see how quickly that works in. Then you can apply your adjustments to your subject. You have access to all of the adjustments that you had um, before to just edit your image in general. So I do like that as well. You know, the select sky also works great. All of these adjustments work really, really well and they make great selections. Uh, so there's no loss here compared to Lightroom. I don't think, I think they're about equally comparable when it comes to that. And of course, then every adjustment that you create goes up as a layer here. So you can see this like radial gradient that I made to kind of enhance the sun, super easy to use. Um, and you can also do subtract. So if you wanted to subtract like subject from this, you know, there's a lot of applications where I've used this in Lightroom to like add light behind a subject. You can do all that good stuff here. So it's actually quite advanced, uh, a lot more advanced than I was expecting. And I think the masking tools are fantastic. Definitely no loss there when it comes to comparing them to Lightroom. Now let's talk about probably the best feature of the whole app, which is the pricing of it. So a lot of you guys are probably trying to get out of Adobe's uh, monthly subscription fee. But I do like how they've done this because you have a few different options for however you want to pay. You know, if you want to pay monthly, that's great. Yearly is fine too, or you can buy lifetime. The thing I like about this is that the lifetime is going to get you updates for as long as they continue to update this product, which hopefully will be a long time into the future. The problem you have with some of the other alternatives like Capture One, On One, DxO, all those alternatives is that while they offer you an outright purchase price, that just works for the current model year. So for example, On One 2024 comes out, you pay for that in full. Uh, and then when On One 2025 comes out, you have to pay an upgrade price. Even though you bought On One 2024 in full, you're just buying that current year. There's no option to like buy it permanently to get every single update. And the marketing team is very good at, at getting you to purchase that next update because there's always some great new feature that you need to have. Um, and they're all the same. DxO does the same thing. DxO Pure Raw 2, 3, 4, 5, um, all that. But this app, you can truly buy lifetime and it'll just continue to allow you to get every single update. So I do like the idea of knowing that you have 
every single update for the lifetime of that product. You don't have to continue to buy it every single year when they come out with a new version. All right, so one of my favorite features that you have here in this that is not available in Lightroom, this is something that typically you'd have to load into Photoshop and then have an external plugin to do, is this idea of selective clarity. This is how you can apply clarity to just certain parts of the image. So for example, if you wanted less clarity in the highlights and more in the shadows, this is how you would do it. And for us landscape and wildlife photographers, that's gonna look really nice because those highlights, a lot of times we want them to be nice and soft. So you could go into the selective clarity, which is just in your regular sliders here and drop the texture, drop the clarity. You can see that's gonna really soften up the highlights in the image. And then on the shadows, you can do the opposite. You can add a little bit of texture and add a little bit of clarity. Now you can see we've kind of increased uh, the pop in the foreground, I guess, and then made this a little more glowy in the background. So really easy to do. And that's just right under your basic adjustments there. This is something, again, that I don't know if you can do in Lightroom. I'm actually pretty positive. There's not an easy way to do this in Lightroom. So really nice to have this feature as an option there. So compared to Lightroom, which does have a relatively easy to use interface, I think this one is even easier. That's what we love about Apple and Apple products is how easy they are to use. You have so many um, features, so many different adjustments that you can make here. There's even a few more that we have hiding like sepia, LUTs, and invert. Um, and you can access all of these options. Now, some of these you don't have in Lightroom. So there is some new ones. Like I said, the selective clarity is one. Levels is another. If you're not comfortable using curves, you can use levels right there. Uh, replace color is really nice. It allows you to change uh, one particular color to a totally different color, um, which can be a fun way to create effects on your image. And of course, this is very extreme right now, but you can also use this for some more realistic looking edits to like make sunsets look better and stuff like that. Uh, we've got the fade here, which allows you to kind of fade out the colors. That can look nice, give your photos a little bit of a kind of like a film look. Uh, color monochrome allows you to give your image kind of a monochrome look based on a certain color once again. Uh, channel mixer allows you to increase or decrease the amount of red, green, or blue in each of the channels. LUTs allow you to apply like kind of presets here for certain looks in your image. And then you have access to pretty much all of the really useful features that Lightroom has as well in here. So those extra new features are really easy to access and they are really nice to have right at your fingertips to make adjustments in your image. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the cataloging system, very easy to use. I would highly recommend it if you are someone who struggles with the Lightroom catalog and figuring it out. I think this catalog is going to work a lot better for you. It's snappy, it's fast, everything about it I like. Easy to organize the folders here easy to click on new images and go in there and just quickly apply some edits. You can see in real time here, just how quickly I can jump in here, make some adjustments. Uh, so I do think it's gonna run a little bit faster potentially um, than your Lightroom Classic. All right, so we've talked about all the pros. There's obviously some cons as well. So why would you maybe not want to purchase this software? Now, number one, uh, there's no profile corrections options in here. Um, that's kind of disappointing because it's nice to get rid of that vignetting um, that you can do in Lightroom and most any other photo editor. I would assume or hope that this is coming in a future update. But as of right now, this recording, end of July 2025, there's no profile corrections here. So you can't really do anything about correcting any vignetting or warping from your lens. Now, Also, obviously, it's only available for Apple users. If you're a Windows user, you are straight out of luck. You need a Mac computer to be able to run this thing or an iPhone to be able to use the mobile app. Now, probably the biggest one for me is that there is no HDR or panorama blending mode. You know, a lot of times in Lightroom, if you take an HDR image stack um, or if you do a panorama, you can just blend it right there. You go up to, you know, like mode and then um, panorama or HDR, and then you can automatically blend it. You can't do that here. Now you can export your images um, to basically Apple's Photoshop alternative, which is called Pixelmator. Um, and then you can do it there, but that requires you to have another app. Now it is more affordable than Photoshop, of course, but it does require you to have another app. Whereas you can do a lot of those things just in Lightroom itself. Um, so it is a little bit of a bummer that you don't have that feature there to combine images together. Now, when it comes to the color tools, you have the selective color option, which is nice. It's your typical HSL, uh, sliders, but it's HSB here, hue, saturation, brightness instead of luminance. Uh, now, what you're missing is an eyedropper tool. So if I wanted to select, say, some of these colors in here, you know, I guess they're green, but maybe I wanted to use like the eyedropper in Lightroom because then it selects green and yellow. Um, it gives you a little more accurate selection. 
and there's no point color tool. I do love the point color tool that's available uh, there in Lightroom Classic because there's so much more you can do with it. You are relatively limited to what you can do here. It is nice. It kind of shows you the layout of the colors in your scene. You can see my most of the colors in my image lie in this range here, but there's no way for me to select like yellow and green all at one time, which is really why we need that point color tool. So you are missing that. Okay, so this software does have a kind of denoise and super resolution mode, which you can go up and click these three dots here and hit denoise. Uh, that being said, I don't think that it is quite as good as Lightroom, especially with Lightroom's uh, semi-recent update to their denoise, but it does still work. So I'll just kind of show you the example here of how this looks. I mean, it looks all right, but it does kind of soften the subject a little bit. Of course, we can increase the intensity, but that will get rid of more sharpness. You can see we're missing a lot of sharpness there. So um, I'd like to see some kind of sharpness recovery here in the denoise, but if you're not dealing with super, super noisy images, um, this certainly would work just fine for you. Okay, so should you buy this software or not? I truly have no skin in the game. I don't get anything if you buy this. This video is not sponsored, so I truly don't care. But I think that this software is going to be good for you. If you're someone who maybe you struggle in Lightroom a little bit, you're not quite sure what to do, you have a hard time dealing with the catalog, with the interface, um, all of that. Or on the other hand, if you're someone in Lightroom who says, I'm sick of paying Adobe this monthly fee, you know, you're going to rack up the bill over years and years and years, or you're a user who doesn't use it that often and you feel like you're paying this monthly fee for nothing. Uh, this is a perfect alternative to switch to so that you don't have to keep paying that monthly fee. So you can just pay that lifetime. So I would really recommend it for that. Now, on the other hand, if you are someone uh, like me who you're, you really need the absolute most cutting edge features, I would probably recommend staying with Lightroom Classic. They're definitely receiving more updates. One thing that's a huge minus on this software, since being a acquired um, by Apple in February, there has been zero, zero, actually no updates other than bug fixes. There's been no features added, which is really disappointing. You would think, you know, Apple acquires them. Now they've got a lot more money. They're going to kind of ramp up the features. Uh, whereas Lightroom, they haven't, the Adobe hasn't skipped the beat when they've came to updating Lightroom and adding new features and whatnot. So for that reason, you know, Lightroom might be better for someone who needs all the latest and greatest features. Um, but if you are someone who's looking for simplicity, Photomator, great. Uh, Pixelmator is also good as well. Maybe I'll make a video on that in the future. That's kind of your Photoshop alternative. Um, and the two software work really well together. So it's well worth considering if you're looking for something a little more simple and a little cheaper. Otherwise, if you guys have any questions about the software, let me know down below in the comments. Be happy to answer it for you. I've been testing this out for a couple of weeks now. Um, and this is kind of my findings, what I've found. It's a great software. Um, and I think a lot of you guys are going to get great use out of this. Um, otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Help me to continue growing. I'll continue to provide you videos that are going to help you to improve your photography. My name is Austin James Jackson. We'll see you guys next time.